What really happened to Suzy Quattro, star in Happy Days? Suzy Quattro was born Susan K. Quattro on June 3, 1950, in Detroit, Michigan. She grew up in a household where music was not just a pastime but a way of life. Her father, Art Quattro, was a jazz musician and the leader of the Art Quattro Trio, a popular local group. This connection to the music world would profoundly influence young Susie, providing her with both inspiration and early exposure to the world of entertainment. The Quattro family was a tight-knit unit, with music at the heart of their lives. Susie was the fourth of five children, and her siblings were also musically inclined. Her sisters, Arlene and Patty, shared her love for music, and together they would embark on the early stages of their musical journeys. The Quattro household was filled with the sounds of jazz, classical, and early rock and roll, creating a rich and diverse musical environment that fostered Susie's growing interest in the art form. From a young age, Susie showed a natural affinity for music. She began playing the piano at age seven, taking lessons from her father, who recognized her talent and encouraged her to explore her musical abilities. The piano was just the beginning. Susie soon took an interest in other instruments, particularly the bass guitar, which would later become her signature instrument. Her father, who was a skilled musician, provided guidance and support, helping her develop her skills and nurturing her budding passion. Susie's early exposure to live performances also played a significant role in shaping her future career. As a child, she would often accompany her father to his gigs, where she would watch him perform with his band. These experiences left a lasting impression on her, sparking a desire to be on stage herself. The energy, the connection with the audience, and the thrill of performing live became something that young Susie aspired to achieve in her own life. At the age of 14, Susie took her first major step towards a career in music by joining her sisters in their all-girl band, The Pleasure Seekers. The band was formed in 1964 and consisted of Susie, Patty, Arlene, and two other friends. Susie initially played the bass guitar, an instrument she chose because no one else in the band wanted to play it. Despite its reputation as a Mont's instrument, Susie embraced the challenge, quickly mastering it and making it her own. This decision would later become a defining aspect of her persona as a musician. The Pleasure Seekers quickly gained popularity in the Detroit music scene, known for their energetic performances and pioneering spirit as one of the first all-female rock bands. Susie's role in the band was crucial. Her stage presence, musical talent, and confidence set her apart as a natural leader. The band performed at various venues across Detroit, including teen clubs and concerts, and even opened for major acts like the Rolling Stones. These early performances gave Susie valuable experience and honed her skills as a performer, setting the stage for her later success. Quattro's career truly took off in the early 1970s when she was discovered by record producer Mickey Most, who was instrumental in shaping her early career. She relocated to the UK where she was signed to Rack Records. Her debut single, Rolling Stone, was released in 1972, but it was her 1973 single Can the Can that catapulted her to stardom. The song reached number one on the UK singles chart and was a massive hit across Europe and Australia. This success established Quattro as a force to be reckoned with in the rock music scene. Throughout the 1970s, Quattro continued to release a string of hits that solidified her place in rock history. Songs like 48 Crash, Devil Gate Drive, and The Wild One became anthems of the era, and her leather-clad, bass-wielding image became iconic. Quattro's music was characterized by its high energy, raw sound, and catchy hooks, all of which were complemented by her powerful stage presence. She was a trailblazer, proving that women could hold their own in the rock genre, which was predominantly male at the time. One of the most significant highlights of Quattro's career was her influence on other female musicians. She paved the way for future generations of women in rock, inspiring artists like Joan Jett, Debbie Harry, and Chrissy Hind, who have all cited Quattro as an influence. Her success in a male-dominated industry challenged gender norms and opened doors for women who wanted to pursue careers in rock music. Quattro's impact extended beyond just music she became a symbol of female empowerment and independence. In addition to her music career, Quattro also found success as an actress. 
She is perhaps best known for her role as Leather Tuscadero on the popular television show Happy Days in the late 1970s. This role introduced her to a wider audience in the United States and further cemented her status as a pop culture icon. Her appearances on Happy Days showcased her talent as a performer and helped to expand her fan base beyond the music world. Despite the changes in the music industry and the rise of new genres, Quattro has continued to evolve and adapt throughout her career. She has released numerous albums over the years, with her most recent work demonstrating her versatility and enduring appeal. In 2019, she released the album No Control, which was well received by critics and fans alike. The album showed that Quattro still had the same passion and energy that had propelled her to stardom decades earlier. Quattro's influence and legacy were further recognized in 2020 when she was the subject of the documentary Suzy Q. The film chronicled her life and career, providing an in-depth look at her journey from a young girl in Detroit to a global rock icon. The documentary highlighted not only her contributions to music but also her role as a trailblazer for women in the industry. Beyond her music and acting career, Quattro has also made significant contributions as an author and radio personality. She has written several books, including her autobiography Unzipped, which gives readers an intimate look at her life and career. Additionally, she has hosted radio shows, where she shares her love of music and her extensive knowledge of the industry with listeners. Her first marriage to guitarist Len Tucky, whom she married in 1976, ended in divorce in 1992 after 16 years of marriage. The couple had two children together, and the dissolution of their marriage was a difficult and painful experience for Susie. Despite their shared passion for music, which had initially brought them together, the pressures of life on the road, coupled with the strains of balancing career and family life, took their toll on the relationship. The end of her marriage to Tucky was not just the loss of a partner but also the end of a significant chapter in her life. Susie has spoken candidly about the sadness and sense of failure she felt during this time, as she had always strived for success in all aspects of her life. Quattro's second marriage to German concert promoter Rainer Haas in 1993 also faced challenges. Although they remained married, they lived apart for many years due to their respective careers, with Susie continuing to tour and perform around the world while Haas stayed in Germany. This physical separation was a source of strain on their relationship, leading to moments of loneliness and sadness for Susie, who often found herself alone on the road. The difficulty of maintaining a long-distance marriage, combined with the emotional toll of constant travel and performing, was a burden that Susie carried with her throughout her later career. In addition to personal losses, Susie Quattro has also faced professional setbacks that brought moments of sadness and frustration. Despite her success in the 1970s, the music industry is notoriously fickle, and Quattro experienced the highs and lows of fame. By the late 1970s and early 1980s, the popularity of her music began to wane as musical tastes changed and new genres emerged. The transition from being a chart-topping artist to struggling for relevance in a rapidly evolving industry was a difficult adjustment for Susie. She faced the reality of declining record sales, less airplay, and fewer opportunities, which inevitably led to feelings of sadness and doubt about her future in the music business. However, rather than allowing these challenges to defeat her, Susie used them as motivation to reinvent herself and continue pursuing her passion for music. As she grew older, Susie faced the difficulties of maintaining her physical and vocal stamina while continuing to perform at the high energy level for which she is known. The physical demands of touring and performing, combined with the societal pressures on aging women, especially in the entertainment industry, brought moments of introspection and sadness. Susie has openly discussed the challenges of aging as a rock musician, acknowledging the changes in her body and voice but also embracing them as part of her journey. Despite these challenges, she has remained committed to her craft, continuing to perform and create new music well into her 60s and 70s proving that her passion for rock and roll transcends the limitations of age. In 2006, her daughter and grandchild moved back into the Essex Manor House. Toward the end of 2008, Quattro's children had moved out of the house and she temporarily put it up for sale, stating that she had empty nest syndrome. Quattro continues to live in Essex and Hamburg, and sometimes in Detroit. 
Since 2011, she has published music videos on YouTube. On March 31, 2012, Quattro broke her right knee and left wrist while boarding an aircraft in Kyiv, Ukraine, where she had performed the night before. As a result, she had to cancel her appearance at the Detroit Music Awards on April 27, where she was to perform and be inducted into the Detroit Hall of Fame along with her sisters. Had she been able to go, that would have been her first performance in America in over 30 years. Quattro also had to reschedule other concert dates, while some were cancelled altogether. In 2020, Quattro was awarded the Icon Award by the Women's International Music Network.